Letters between then Prime Minister John Howard and a survivor of the Port Arthur massacre played a critical role in driving national gun reform. Walter McHack's wife, Nanette, and two young daughters, Elena and Madeleine, were among the 35 people gunned down during the attack in late April 1996. It does remain one of the deadliest civilian shootings in the world. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese today praised Mr McHack's correspondence with his predecessor for its role in overhauling gun laws. To encourage him to hold on to his convictions and do what John Howard knew was right. Of course, it is to Prime Minister Howard's enduring and eternal credit that he did precisely that, and I honour him today. John Howard showed courage and determination in that moment of monumental national challenge. And Walter Mikak joins us live now. Walter, we really appreciate you making the time for us today. Thank you so much. Looking back at that time, decades I, on now, I, how do you think that you managed to find the strength, the will to write that letter, to extend your support to a Prime Minister when, of course, it would have been you who was in the world of pain at that time? Yeah, well, I, I suppose... Thank, thank you for your time. Um, I felt like I was in a bit of an abyss, really, and I wanted to express, I suppose, it was therapeutic in some ways to get that down and to hope that we're going to get some change to our laws and how, how one person could have caused all that, all that carnage that day. And now we're going to see that letter displayed. How important for you is that, to have that reminder in the form of this letter to now be there for all to see? What purpose are you hoping that that will serve? I think it, I'm really hoping it's going to inspire young people. Uh, you know, taking action, taking... When, you, when you're passionate about something and wanting to change things, so, and, you know, that may not necessarily be in regard to firearms because we, we've had we've people a bit complacent in regard to... Um, we haven't had mass shootings. We've only had one mass shooting in the, the 27 years since Port Arthur. But, you know, like even um, just the knowledge that they can, they, they can, they can change, you know, that it's like climate change that they're climate change, domestic violence, a whole lot of issues that um, if people feel strongly about, they, if they, they use the right channels, they can really make a difference. Well, we all do just have so much to thank you for in terms of your campaigning on gun reform, that letter, the impact that that's had on Australia since the reforms were introduced. When you look at the issue of guns in this country today in 2023, are you satisfied that we have still got the balance right? As we know, different states and territories do have different laws in place. Just this year, WA undertook its own gun buyback scheme after making, I think it was 56 types of firearms illegal in that state. Do other states need to follow suit? Do we need more uniform yep. laws uh, across the country? I think there's always more work to do. I mean, the National Firearms Agreement didn't instigate uh, the National Firearms Registry. Um, each state's dealt, done part, parts of it, and we really need an integrated system where it's national, uh, where it's uh, national, and you know, so that police and emergency services, when they go to events, uh, know what they're confronted by. Like, uh, you look at the event um, in Queensland uh, back in uh, December last year, and we might have had a different scenario if the police had, had, had known what they were confronted by. So, there's always work to be done, and I, I, I suppose. My overwhelming comment to that is that um, it's been 27 years since the National Firearms Agreement. Uh, let's finish off the work and get that registry done uh, for the safety of our community and future generations. Walter, this week, the nation is mourning another senseless tragedy. The Hunter Valley bus crash is obviously very different in nature to Port Arthur. I'm not trying to compare the two events in that sense, but the outpouring of grief at Young Lives Cut Short is, of course, a, a very familiar theme to you. What advice would you have for loved ones who are yeah. reeling this week as you did all those years ago? Are there any lessons that you learnt at that time that 
you think could be useful to those families now? Uh, well, I mean, in many ways, it's, it, it sort of makes life feel a bit meaningless when you love one, you've lost your loved ones. Um, and I suppose the best thing I can say is to try and try and share your feelings, try and um, you know, have a counsellor. Uh, by, by sharing that, I think, is one of the integral parts of, 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 of healing. Um, and, and just take each day at a, at a time, because it's hard sometimes to see. I mean, I, for me, there was months and months where I thought, what, the, what's the point of being here? And, you know, l luckily there was uh, dealing with the firearms situation and also then setting up the Alana and Madeline Foundation, which gave me some focus. So um, I, I just can't... I, my heart is with the, all those people. I mean, it's, it, I'm, it's just such a senseless thing because you, you think this could have been prevented. Um, and, and just such um, loss of uh, potential from all those people, you know, some incredible people uh, and that loss of potential, which is exactly how I felt losing my daughters and thinking, you know, we're not going to get... I'm not going to get to see uh, what they were able to achieve in the world as, as is not the world. Walter Mikak, thank you for sharing that and thank you for sharing your time with us today. We all look forward to, to seeing those letters in the flesh next time we're visiting Canberra. Appreciate all the work you've done. Thank you. Thanks, Aisha. I appreciate it. Thank you.